Hello everyone, today we will create a page turn transition in Fusion and save it as a macro template for use in the edit page. Here is a timeline with two clips. From the effect library, find and add the Fusion Cross Dissolve transition to the timeline. Right click the transition and open it in the Fusion page, where Media in 1 is the outgoing clip and Media in 2 is the incoming clip. Delete the existing cross dissolve group, disconnect media in 1 from the media out node, and connect media in 2 to the media out. Make sure media in 1 node is selected, click the image plane 3D, and render a 3D in the toolbar to add them into the editor. Merge the renderer node to media in 2, and we see that the first clip appears in the right viewer. Select the image plane 3D node, press shift space to bring up the tool selection, Find the Bender 3D node and add it to the editor. Drag the Bender node into the left viewer, so that we can see the result as we adjust its parameters. In the inspector, the default type is Bend, which is what we will use for this effect. Change the axis to X and angle to 90, adjust the amount, and the image is bending along the X axis. The center value determines the base point for the bending, we can get a rolling effect as we change its value. The range control can limit the effect to only a certain part of the image. While the center is set to zero, decrease the range's minimal value, and we get a page turning effect. This will be the main parameter we use to build our page turn transition. Set the amount to maximum one, and examine the bending result in the 3D viewer. Instead of a smooth cylinder, we see a polygon prism. To get a high quality cylinder result, select the image plane node, go to inspector and increase the subdivisions. In this case, I found 80 is good enough. Switch to two viewers, select the bender node, make sure the amount is set to one. Change the range value and we can see a very good bending result. Select the image plane node, go to the inspector, inside the transform tab, Increase the scale until we see the image perfectly cover the entire scene. The scale is set to 2.946 for this demo. Now we have all the bender parameters ready, we will keyframe the range minimal value to have a page turn animation. Go to frame 0, change the minimal value to 0.7, enable keyframe. Go to frame 25, set the minimal value to 0, a new keyframe is added automatically. Play the clip, and we have a sort of page turn transition animated. But even after the minimal value reaches zero, there is still a part of the image remaining on screen. To resolve this, we can change the center to a negative value. At frame 25, which is the end keyframe of range value, enable the keyframe for the center parameter. Move to the last frame 29, enter minus 0.1 in the center field. Move the playhead, we see that the image now keeps rolling to the left and disappears from the scene. The page is now turning from right to left horizontally, but I'd like to have the page start turning from a corner. Select the image plane node, go to the transform tab in the inspector. Change the rotation Z value to 30. The page rolls from the corner, but it's not aligned with the view. With the Bender node selected, click the Merge 3D button in the toolbar to insert a Merge 3D node. Go to the Transform tab in the Inspector, enter equals sign in the Rotation Z field to enable simple expression. We will connect this value to the Rotation Z of the Image Plane node. With the help of Pick Whipping, there is no need to type the expression manually. Inside the Node Editor, Control click the image plane node to select both the merge node and image plane node. Back to the inspector panel, click the image plane header to open the parameters. Drag a whip from the add button in the merge node, connect it to the rotation Z parameter in the image plane node. Add minus sign at the beginning of the expression to compensate for the rotation in the image plane node. The image is now fit to the screen as expected. If we change rotation Z to minus 30, the page turns from the top right corner. 
Next, we will add some shadow to the edge of the turning page. Select the renderer node, press shift space to open the tool selection window, find and add a drop shadow node. Since we will be adjusting page turning directions, we set both drop angle and drop distance to zero to ensure the shadow is showing regardless which direction the page turns. For example, change the rotation Z to minus 150, which turns the page from the top left corner. Or change to 150, from bottom left, the shadow still works. Set the rotation Z value back to 30, which will be the default page turn direction. Now the page turn transition is done in the Fusion page, it's time to save this as a macro transition template for use in the edit page. But since we can change the transition duration on a timeline in the edit page, the keyframes we just did for this one second long transition will need to be adjusted to match the new duration. There are different ways to get this done. I've used the resolve parameter modifier in another video for a noise transition macro template. This time I will use the key stretcher modifier. Select the bender node, go to the inspector. Right-click center parameter, select insert, keyframe stretcher. Right-click the range minimal value dot, also select insert, keyframe stretcher. Go to the modifiers tab, we see that two modifiers added for the center parameter and range minimal parameter. The clip is one second long, set the source end to 29. Change the stretch start to zero, stretch end to 25, which is the ending frame of range minimal animation. Do the same to the stretcher of center parameter. The center parameter animation started at frame 25 after the range minimal animation is finished, so we will apply the same stretch as in the range stretcher. Play the clip, the transition still works as expected after applying the key stretches. One last thing, we can also enable the motion blur to have a more realistic transition effect. Select the renderer node, go to the settings tab in the inspector. Enable motion blur, and it opens a few more settings to control the look and feel of the blur. Set the quality to 6, and we have a very good result. But it's taking lots of resources, and slow on rendering. I will turn it off for now. To select nodes for the macro, we use Control click to select the nodes in order. Make sure the image plane node is selected before the merge one node, the image plane will take the outgoing clip as media in one and the merge one will take the incoming clip as media in two. Once all nodes are selected except media in and out nodes, right click and choose macro, create macro. Name the macro essential page turn transition. Export the image plane rotation Z parameter as direction. Also include shadow strength of the drop shadow node. Motion blur and quality of the renderer node. Choose save as group from the file menu, save to fusion. Templates. Edit. Transitions folder. Close the macro editor and go back to the edit page. In the timeline, alt drag the first clip and append a copy at the end of the timeline. Drag the newly saved page turn transition from effects library to the timeline between the second and third clip and a default one second page turn transition is added. We can now increase the duration just like any other transitions. In the inspector transition tab, we can hide the shadow by setting the shadow strength to zero. Or enable the motion blur if you want. In the direction field, we can enter any number of degrees. The default angle is 30, which is turning from the bottom right. Minus 30 is top right. Minus 150 is top left. 150 is bottom left, and so on. We can even keyframe the direction, start from the bottom right, and slowly transition to horizontal page flip. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.